Hey guys, so we're talking about lumbar spinal stenosis today and I wanna to talk about signs and symptoms. And so signs being like, what do we see on imaging? Symptoms like, what do you feel? And so let's go over like the top three or four things of each of those that I see when I treat lumbar spinal stenosis. Okay, so let's talk about signs first. So what maybe they see on imaging, such as x-rays or MRIs, so you're most likely exploring lumbar spinal stenosis because you've been told you have lumbar spinal stenosis or they found that on your MRI and they just say stenosis found at L4, L5, L5, S1, it could be anywhere. And that stenosis could be caused from arthropathies or joint changes over time or just a decrease in space. And so that's really the gist of it. So the sign of lumbar spinal stenosis is that in your spine, Spine. Let me grab the spine here. In your spine, you have a decrease in space. You have a space issue, all right? There's just too much and too little of an area. So over time, we lose disc height, disc height. We lose vertebral height. Boom, things shrink. You get a little shorter. Just you lose some space. And that's the definition of stenosis. A sign of stenosis is that you are having a decrease in space around those nerves. And a lot of times that decrease in space happens over time and we don't really know why or we can't stop it. And then we can have it at a lot of levels too. And so you just have a space issue. You need some more real estate in your back. Well, so that space issue can cause back and leg pain. And so back pain and leg pain can be a symptom of lumbar spinal stenosis. And so the sign being a reduction in space, either caused from a injury in the past or a severe herniation in the past or anything that causes a reduction in space. I mean, there's so many things that can cause stenosis that um, it, it, it tends to be a garbage can turn too. So you can do an MRI and uh, be told that you have stenosis and not even have stenosis-like symptoms. And so you really need the signs and symptoms to match up. And that's what us as physical therapists do all the time is we try to put everything together to see, okay, if you do have stenosis, a decrease in space, are you having symptoms related to that? And so the reduction in space can happen anywhere in the lumbar spine. Most common area is L5, S1. We could have anywhere in that cause back, symptom, leg pain, symptom. Another symptom of lumbar spinal stenosis may be uh, what's called neurogenic claudication in that you walk for an extended period of time. You have back and or leg pain. And then when you sit down, it improves right away like legitimately immediately. And so that's a symptom of lumbar spinal stenosis. And so signs of lumbar spinal stenosis is what we see um, on the imaging. So you have a reduction in space somewhere. You can get into the nitty gritty of that, but that's like the overarching theme of stenosis is that it's, it's just a reduction in space and that can happen in the middle of the canal. And so if we were to look down this way, it can happen in the middle, which is called central, or we can call it um, on the outside, which is lateral foraminal, which is that little hole that you see right there, right? That's the foramen that the nerve comes out of and that nerve can cause pain down the leg. And so you have a reduction of space around that nerve and, it, and then the, that reduction of space, boom, causes you to have back and or leg pain, which can cause other symptoms as well. But the number one symptom related to lum true lumbar spinal stenosis is the neurogenic claudication, which just means that you walk a certain period of time and then you have symptoms down your leg and your back and they improve immediately when you sit down, like immediately, no lingering discomfort, immediately. That's a true symptom of lumbar spinal stenosis. Now, now some people with lumbar spinal stenosis, maybe a more mild form, may just have pain when they extend. So this is neutral. This is flexion, such as bending forward, and extension, boom, and they go to arch backwards and they have symptoms in their back and or leg. That can also be another symptom of lumbar spinal stenosis. And so signs and symptoms can be a little tricky. And with the human body, you can have tons of signs and no symptoms, and you can also have some symptoms with little signs. And so it makes it interesting to treat, but the best care in the very beginning is more conservative in nature in which there's high reward and very low risk. Conservative, nothing invasive. And we want to use flexion and innovation, flexion based exercises to help us out because flexion opens things up. A symptom is that you have pain with extension and relief with flexion. A sign being that in that foramina or in that hole, there's a reduction in space. You're running out of room which is okay. And so the other question I always get to following up with that is like, will it ever get better? Well, it absolutely can get better, but there's a pathway you should follow and you should be diligent with your exercises because when you have symptoms, 
you have an angry nerve. That nerve needs some more space and so it generates some inflammation around it, causes your body to focus attention on it, and that inflammation and reduction in space is what causes you symptoms. And so, lumbar spinal stenosis is super fun to treat. I've seen people do so well and they're capable of doing so much, but you really have to learn what's safe for you and what's not safe for you. And so, signs and symptoms related to lumbar spinal stenosis, typical pathway, x-ray MRI shows some sort of reduction in space somewhere in here in your lower back most commonly. That reduction in space can cause symptoms, which can be the back and or leg pain. And guys, really a good detailed physical exam can tell you that because if you have mild nerve involvement, you may not have reflux changes and numbness and tingling down your leg or weakness in your leg. But if you have moderate to severe nerve involvement, that can be very different. And so we use flexion-based exercises to help us out at first. Now you should always try to pursue more conservative options at first because those are, those are the less risky options for our body. I hope this is um, beneficial for you, but signs and symptoms for lumbar spinal stenosis can vary with flexion and extension or just age or just who you are. And we just don't know until we get our hands in there and we take a look at your body and see how you're doing so you can have that long-term improvement because the reduction in space is most likely caused from things that you just can't change over time and that you really don't wanna go in your back and start changing a bunch of things because when that happens, that typical pathway, unfortunately, isn't always the best. And so you wanna start more conservative but the signs and symptoms for lumbar spinal stenosis are very classic and most likely if you're in the, you know, the last few decades of your life, you have some sort of stenosis and that's okay because that happens to everybody, but it doesn't mean you have to have symptoms. And so I hope you guys find this useful. If you guys have any more questions about signs and symptoms with spinal stenosis, just reach out, but it's pretty classic stuff. If you guys like the content I'm putting out there, please subscribe to the channel. I enjoy doing this, so I'm gonna keep doing it, but I hope you guys are getting something from it. Show some love, and as always, guys, stay healthy, keep moving, and take care of yourself.